Hello, good morning and welcome to our Cafe Church this morning. We've got a craft activity coming up and you're going to need some resources for that and we'll tell you about that in a minute. But for the rest of our Cafe Church, you know, it doesn't quite feel Cafe Church enough for me yet. Give me a few minutes. Welcome officially to our Cafe Church this morning. My name is Steve, I'm part of the staff team here at St Paul's and wherever you're listening from this morning, it's great to have you with us. There's a whole host of us involved in this morning. Natasha is going to be showing us later on how to do our Palm Sunday craft. Ollie is going to be teaching us some things about the Palm Sunday story. Kate, Beth and Richard, Team Flanders, are going to be leading us in our songs and Ruth is going to be bringing some notices for us later on. If you're new, thank you for joining us. We want to say wherever you're at, if you're new to faith, if you're just exploring or it's your first time with us at St Paul's, wherever you're at, you are very welcome here this morning. As I said, we've got a craft activity coming up uh, and if you've managed to get the resources ready for that, that's brilliant. But for now, it's time for a song. So let's stand up, limber up ready, and we're going to hand over to Team Flanders for our first song. Here we go. Oh, 
Now we've got our Palm Sunday craft coming up in just a minute. But you've been doing some Palm Sunday craft at home already and you've been sending them in. So what we're going to do now is have a look at some of the pictures that you've been sending in. Let's have a look. And of course, I think probably my favourite of this week is one from our resident art teacher, Ros Flanders. Isn't that amazing? Ros, thank you for that. Now, as I promised, if you haven't done a craft activity yet, now is your opportunity. Natasha taught a few of us earlier on how to do this and we videoed her showing us how to do it and the rest of us having a go and this is your chance to have a go as well. Here we go, let's have a look. Hello everybody, welcome to our Cafe Church Craft. Uh, Natasha's going to teach us how to make a palm cross. We've got a bunch of us here, we're going to have a go, we've got our strips ready um, and hopefully you can have a go at home and we're going to see how we all get on. Okay, Natasha, over to you. Okay, great. So you need a long piece of paper, preferably A3, but you can have two pieces of A4 paper that you, you sellotape together, like me. And you want to cut it along the long strip, and ideally you want it the same width the whole way along, or else it gets a bit tricky. So the first step is you fold it in half lengthways. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, and then you just take it back out again so it's a long strip. Yeah. Right, then you take your right hand side and you bend it up at the center where you folded to make a right angle. Like this. Okay, okay, yeah, I got Not that. Doing very well. Okay, <laughs> everyone okay? Yeah. Ruth, yeah. are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay, then you, you take <laughs> then you take your top strip and you fold it over the back. Okay. And bring it down. So that top strip is now pointing down. And you can still see that triangle you've made. Okay, everyone? Yes. Yep. <laughs> And then you fold it up again. So you take the top strip, sorry, bottom strip now, and fold it up to make the top strip. Wow. Okay, so you should now have, if you look at the back, you should have a square shape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well done, everyone. Okay. <laughs> then you take your left strip. This one, um, you bring it forward over the top, fold it over. Okay. Um, then you take this right hand strip and you're going to put it round the back and through the cross, uh, through the square that you've made. So you're going to push it through that square. Got it. Got it. You're going to put it the whole way through. Yeah. This is how it should look when you finish. You've still got the square at the front. Yeah. And you've got one piece coming out to the left and one piece at the top. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I haven't got it. <laughs> no, mine's Okay. Is everyone okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> then you take your top strip. And you pull it to the um, forwards and you pull it through this square at the front. And you're not going to take it the whole way through because the top bit will be the top bit of your cross. So you leave a little bit at the top. And there's the top of your cross here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then you take your left hand strip and you're going to fold this one to the back. So you take it round the back and put it through that square. Like what? Oh my gosh, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And again, don't don't pull it the whole way through. What? Because some of that's gonna be the left hand side of your cross. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, they're looking good, everyone. <laughs> okay. Then you take the right hand strip and you pull that through the back square. <laughs> and you fold them down. Yes. And you should have a cross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, well done. The... I can see yes. some crosses. <laughs> oh. How did you get on? Did you manage it? Send us your photos in. Show us what you achieved. But now it's time for us to sing again. We're going to sing My Lighthouse. You've already showed us some of the videos of you doing the actions, but let's do the actions together. You ready? Stand up, limber up. Here we go. church but we still have our cafe church painting for this morning 
everybody. Look at this. This was done by Katie Glass. Katie, fantastic job. Really great. Thank you so much for this. And this is going to really help with the story that we've got now. Have a listen to this. Jesus and his team walk three miles from Bethany to Jerusalem. At the halfway point on the Mount of Olives, Jesus delegates the transport issue to two of the team. He asks, you see that village? Walk in and you'll find a donkey and its baby tied up. Bring both of them to me. If you get stopped, just say, the boss needs them. There'll be no hassle. You know, all this slots in nicely with the clues that the old messenger Zechariah gave. He said, put flyers in every door in Jerusalem, posters on every free wall. Tell them, look, your king is making his entrance, but he doesn't hype it up or pose. He arrives on a baby donkey. The two get to the village and it all fits Jesus' description. They bring the donkeys back. They use their coats for a saddle and Jesus gets on. He rides up to Jerusalem and the crowds are going crazy. They're chucking their coats on the floor. They're waving palm leaves, all of it in respect. And they're shouting different slogans. Free us! Liberation now! God, you do good. Jesus, David's son. And there's only one God in heaven. Only one God in heaven. He arrives and Jerusalem and the whole city is buzzing. Who is this guy? People are saying. And others are going. It's the messenger, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. The religious leaders go up to Jesus and say, Jesus, stop your followers making all this noise. It's causing too much trouble. But Jesus says, hey, if they stop, the stones will start crying out instead. You can't stop this. Hello everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Ollie and I'm a trainee vicar here at St Paul's. And this here is Donkey. He's not a trainee vicar, but he is a very good listener thanks to these enormous ears he's got. Now, on that first Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, just like Donkey here, the crowds were shouting, Hosanna! Hooray! Hosanna for the Son of David! But just five days later, they were shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! We want him dead! In just five days, Everything changed. Ah, I see what you did there. That was very clever, Donkey. But back to what I was saying. For us too, in the last few weeks, everything has changed. There's an article on the BBC News website at the moment entitled March 2020, the month that everything changed. Just a few weeks ago, if you had a thousand pounds and a passport, you could go pretty much anywhere in the world that you wanted to. And now we can't even go beyond our front door unless it's for food or our daily exercise. The nurseries are closed, schools are closed, we can't go to the swimming pool or to the play park. We can't even see our friends. Everything has changed. Oi, stop that, I'm trying to make some serious points here, donkey. Anyway, where had I got to? Oh yes, everything had changed. Oi. But one thing hasn't changed. One thing has remained the same. Our God hasn't changed. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And between that first, uh, first Palm Sunday 
and first geared Friday, there was one thing that didn't change. The crowds went from shouting who's a Hosanna to crucify him. But Jesus didn't change and his love for all the people didn't change. As he approached Jerusalem, before he rode in on that donkey, Jesus spoke about the people there. And he said how he longed to gather them and love them, just like a mother hen likes to gather up her chicks under her wings. But he knew it wasn't going to be straightforward. And he knew it was going to cost him everything. Now I wonder how these past uh, two weeks have been for you. Maybe you identify with the happy crowds of Palm Sunday. You've really been enjoying these past two weeks, the chance to reconnect with your family and with neighbours, not missing school or your commute one little bit. But maybe like me, you also identify with the crowds of Good Friday. You've run out of patience. You're fractious and worried. Maybe even angry and scared. However you've been, know that Jesus' love for you has not changed. His love is unconditional and beyond imagination, whether we're at our best or at our worst. So, everything has changed. But God and his love for us in Jesus is just the same. If you don't know this God, if you don't know Jesus, and in these crazy times you would dearly love to know the God who doesn't change, the God whose love for you is unconditional, then can I invite you to pray, to simply talk to him, to say something like, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the times I've ignored you and for all the wrong things I do. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died to set me free. Thank you that now you are alive again. Please help me to get to know you and to follow you. And may I know your presence with me in these times. If you'd like to, you could make that prayer your own during our next song.
Jesus, thank you that however we are and however we react, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Praise you for who you are. Amen. Let's, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. You ready? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go to Ruth now. She's got some things for us to know about. So now we come to a time for news and notices and let you know what's going on for Holy Week here at St Paul's Dorking. And whether you're joining us from locally um, at St Paul's, uh, whether you're an established regular member of the church, or whether you are joining us from further afield, we've got um, a real plan of the journey of Holy Week for us as a church body. And whoever you are, wherever you are, we would absolutely love for you to join in with our programme and our spiritual journey this week. So things start, of course, today as Palm Sunday. And whether you're part of the nine o'clock congregation and you've watched the nine o'clock online or the 10.30 Cafe Church congregation, I do encourage you, if you've got some spare time today or perhaps tomorrow even, perhaps watch the other service, the other congregation, because there's uh, lots going on in both services and you might be blessed by watching the other service that we'll post on our website. So Holy Week begins today and from tomorrow we've got a daily devotional that we're all working through as a church. That can be found on our website and in our Friday email. And Graham, um, who is our licensed lay minister, has put this devotional uh, together for us as a church so that even though we're scattered across many, many homes and in lots of different postcodes, there's a sense of us all every day reading the same readings, praying similar prayers and reflecting together as the body of Christ, as one church. So I really encourage you to take part in our daily devotion and we can be united in our worship and in our life of prayer this week. So then we come to Maundy Thursday and we had planned a big all-age supper together and uh, a service afterwards and obviously we can't quite do that but this isn't going to stop us. We're going to be having at six o'clock a Zoom meeting where we have supper together from our various flats and homes uh, across the town. So details again are on the website and in the Friday email and coming out to you. So look out for the email about this. But you'll be invited to Zoom, which is an app you can download. It's very simple to do. Many of you will already have it. Uh, if you're struggling to get it, just email the church and we will make sure you get set up with Zoom so that you can be part of our Maundy Thursday supper. And you basically set up your computer or your tablet or your phone to video yourself at your meal table at six o'clock on Maundy Thursday. And you will Zoom in all over the town with other households, families, couples, single people doing the same thing. And you can eat whatever you like. You can have pizza, pasta, lobster, thermidor. It doesn't matter. We're going to be joining in together. And then Zoom is great because we can can break out into some groups and have smaller meetings where we can actually have conversation with each other and uh, have some fellowship together over Zoom. This will be followed at eight o'clock on Monday Thursday evening by a quieter, more liturgical, reflective, traditional service that uh, we're going to be putting on and that also will be uh, similar to these services are pre-recorded and shown on our website uh, so do look out as well on the email and on the website for the eight o'clock Maundy Thursday. Then we come to Good Friday and obviously we can't do our walk of witness through the town sadly and we can't meet as we normally do in church for our hour at the cross but instead we will have a service for you called the Stations of the Cross and this is a fairly traditional service but here we're using readings, poetry, art and music uh, to walk us through Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 15 and the narrative of 
the arrest and trial and crucifixion of Jesus. So please do join us at two o'clock on Good Friday for our time together um, looking through the Stations of the Cross. And it's going to be a really special time. And all the artwork that has been produced is original artwork by members of the congregation who've been busy this week uh, preparing beautiful artwork. And we've got amazing poetry and scriptural readings for our time together on Good Friday. Finally, Easter Sunday will soon be here and uh, we won't be able to, of course, have our normal services, but we will be having a nine o'clock traditional communion and that will be streamed to you as this service has been. And a 10.30 cafe church, all age family celebration with an all age uh, spiritual communion so we can join together. Now, just before we stop there, uh, there are lots of little details that we really, really need your help with to make these services particularly special. So when, when we email you out, we'll be asking, can you send in, for instance, for our Easter Sunday uh, nine o'clock communion, instead of having the wonderful flowers that our floral team normally produce, could you send in photos of your flowers growing in your garden or on your window box at home so we can have a kind of floral display uh, to show you? For our all age services, we've got art and craft and colouring sheets and activities where we would really, really love you to send in images of your art and craft or little video snippets of you as a family or as an individual. And all the details are on the Friday email, but we really plead with you to engage beforehand and send us in those snippets so that we can weave them together to have a real sense of all of us as one family celebrating on Easter Sunday. Finally, if you are struggling, we are here for you and we're here to look after you. And this is going to be a long haul of isolation and separation from each other and our loved ones. And you might have done okay in week one and two, but now be really um, finding things are tough. And there's absolutely no shame in struggling or feeling low or feeling anxious or feeling bereaved with the grief of what's going on. And we have a team of people who are trained and who are safe and uh, who have been uh, trusted by the church, who would very much uh, find it a privilege to give you a phone call and to be a listening ear and a friend at this really difficult time. So if that's you, please don't hesitate to email the church support at stpaulsdorking.org.uk or phone us on 01306 743378 and we will get back to you straight away uh, with help and a friendly listening ear. Thank you. And so that's it from us this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you've had a good time this morning. We hope you've been blessed. But even more than that, we hope that you have a really blessed week this week. God bless everyone. See you again soon. One, two, three, four. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the dark. Sure.